I've continued to grind away at Revenants in the hopes of getting our Stadius Warhammer. Not long into my grind, I ran into my next PKer. I barely got to see anything over on this screen, other than a quick little glimpse of some soul split puffs. As usual, the decoy account has been doing a great job at keeping the attention of any PKers. A bit later, my 4 and 3 bracelet effect had worn off on my other account. I didn't realize that's what happened at first, but just seeing my other account getting attacked scared me enough to quickly lobby. While this wasn't any actual danger, I suppose it is good that I can react to stuff like that so quickly. Continuing on with this grind, I got myself some Stadius plate legs and then ran into yet another PKer. This one actually came in from the north, but still went past our little hardcore for the other account anyways. I felt pretty lucky about that here, but I was starting to think that it would be nice to add a second decoy account in the north to grab the attention of anyone coming that way. Well, that's another trip done, but no hammer still. I continued on with the grind though and got plenty more drops along the way. None of which were a hammer though. And after a bit, I ended up getting my next corrupted Stadius War hammer. This felt pretty bad to get since we're now two corrupted in on this grind. There is a silver lining to getting this second corrupted hammer though because it means we can make ourselves a Revenant Bane 2H sword. The Revenant Bane 2H sword is an upgraded version of a Baneite sword that does extra damage to Revenants. To make this weapon you need to use two of the same corrupted melee weapons from Revenants, making this rather tough to make on an iron sometimes. The two corrupted weapons do have to be the exact same weapon, so you can't do like a corrupted Vesta sword and a corrupted Stadius Warhammer, for example. So, while it would have been preferable to get a real Stadius Warhammer, getting a second corrupted gives us our first pair of corrupted weapons to make this sword. This will easily be our best in slot weapon for revenants going forward. The other benefit to this sword is it means we can stop gaining magic XP when killing revenants so that way it'll be quite a long time before we start getting combat levels again. So I went ahead and gathered all the materials needed to make our new sword and then smithed it. I also went ahead and made some simple perks for it with Undead Slayer and Equilibrium 2. Since I hadn't really trained melee much at all, I also needed to get our attack level up so we could even wield the thing. I started off by bringing a rune halberd into the abyss for a few levels. I got up to 58 attack before deciding I wanted to try giving ED3 trash runs a try with my friend. I didn't originally try this method because I figured doing ED3 with one defense and a rune halberd might be a bit sketchy, but I decided to be brave about it anyways. It honestly wasn't so bad doing this method, even if it was a little bit sketchy. The XP was much, much better than the Abyss though, so I think this was the right call. Once I'd hit 60 attack, I grabbed one of the Dragon 2H swords we'd gotten from the cave elemental grind and continued to chip away at our attack level. At level 70 attack, I grabbed myself a Necronium Great Axe and then before too long we'd already hit level 80 attack. Now we can wield our fancy new sword and start smacking around some more revenants. I do have to admit this is a pretty cool looking weapon. It was pretty close to being able to stew boost for extreme attacks and extreme strengths and I had a ton of supplies from all the Croesus I'd been doing. I figured it would be a good decision to work towards making these since they would be a really nice asset to go along with our new melee revenant setup. The first thing I needed to do was unlock spicy stews so I went and completed a couple easy quest requirements first with the golem and then shadow of the storm. Next on the list I needed to complete evil dave's section of recipe for disaster. Completing this requires we have some stews which can be a little annoying to get. You can buy them in the pub in Sears village but you you have to go through multiple dialogue options to get just one, and I personally find that to be a really annoying method. My preferred source of stews is from the Warriors Guild where there's a shop that has 10 in stock. Typically, I'll just come by here and buy out the stock every once in a while, and that keeps my stew supply good. The requirement to enter the Warriors Guild is either 99 in attack or strength, or your combined attack and strength levels are 130. Since our attack level is 
Zany, we just need to get our strength level up to 50 to be able to enter. My strength level was already 49, so I quickly just hopped over to ED3 again and killed a few mobs in solo to get level 50 strength. Then I went into the guild and grabbed myself some stews before continuing on to do the quest. Evil Dave's section of Recipe for Disaster is really easy, and with that done, we can move on to the last step for our stew boost, Evil Dave's Big Day Out. We can do stew boosting now, but until we complete the next quest, there's a much lower chance at getting a good boost from the stews, so it's very much worth completing. This is a bit of a longer quest, but there's nothing particularly difficult about it. It is a very silly and funny quest where you switch bodies with Evil Dave and have to spend the day in the life of him. Definitely one of my favorite quests and I always enjoy getting to run through it. With that one done, we can now grab ourselves a bunch of spices so we can boost for our extreme attack and extreme strengths. Over at Croesus, I ended up nabbing myself another drop with a spore sack. Did I get something? <laughs> Look at that spore sack, what the heck? Okay. Neat, I guess. That's my second one. Not the most exciting thing to see, and hopefully we can get our Crypt Loom top soon. I also decided to do a little bit of Slayer before heading back over to Revenants, so I augmented one of the Black Salamanders that I'd picked up in the wilderness and grabbed some tasks. I actually got pretty lucky and ended up getting a Hex Crest almost immediately into my first Jungle Strike Worms task. Finally, I headed back over to Revenants and continued to get lucky and nabbed a handful of drops. Testing out our new sword, it seemed pretty good so far. Even even though our melee stats are still quite low. As we kill more revenants and level up, it should only continue to get better. Not too long in, I ended up running into a PK or scout. The way they're scouting is they wear the ghostly robes and drink an invisibility potion, so they're very hard to see and they also don't show up on your minimap. This is a trick people would do often to try and inconspicuously see if there's anyone at Revenants before bringing their PKing account there. Luckily, when they log into the game, there's a little puff of smoke that appears. If you're paying attention, you can spot them when they hop in. I used that as my cue to move on to another world before they brought their PKing account. I spent the next hour or so getting a handful of more drops before running into yet another PKer. This one went for the decoy account first as usual, but it seems they spotted the hardcore and actually tried to come after it. Luckily I was quick and teleported away before they had a chance to try and attack me. I got back to work and got myself a Zuriel's top. Shortly after, I ran into another PKer. This time my screen was a bit too far away to see them, but I got out of there as quickly as I could. A little while later, I ended up seeing someone pick up the wilderness bow, and I used this to decide to preemptively swap to another world, just to be safe. It's been a very busy day at Revenants. Over the next little while, I got a couple more drops, and then got yet another corrupted Stadius Warhammer. That's now three corrupted hammers and zero real hammers. This is starting to become a tiny bit depressing. After that, I needed a bit of a break, and I decided to do some more Slayer. I ended up getting an Avian Seas task, which would require me to go to God Wars Dungeon. There are a lot of monsters here that will all aggro onto you unless you're wearing gear related to the faction those enemies are aligned with. Avian Seas are in the Armadil faction, so I needed to wear something Armadil related so I don't get completely shredded there. I didn't have any Armadil items, so I quickly went and completed Temple of Ikov to get the Armadil pendant. Now I can kill these Avian Seas in peace. It's kind of a pain to get all the way to God Wars Dungeon, so I decided I'd have a go at killing Criara once to unlock his boss portal for easy teleports back here. My good friend Mr. Matman came along to help me out, and we made easy work of the boss. Now I'll always have an easy way back here for EVNZ tasks. I realized that I had the resources and skills to upgrade my gear a little bit, and first decided to make a ring of fortune to help increase my luck while slaying. I also had a enough reaper points to buy a hydrix gem, and made myself a reaper necklace as a very nice upgrade to my necklace slot. Then, on my second desert strike worm task, I ended up getting a focus sight. The slayer helmet pieces are really starting to come together already. Since I'd accumulated an insane amount of supplies for making super and extreme strength potions from Croesus, I figured I should just use that to get my herbler level up. I really wanted to get it to 90 since then we'd be able to boost for overloads which would be a massive upgrade. 
After making enough potions to end up with 5,500 3 dose and 3,600 4 dose extreme strengths, I was able to hit 90 Herblore with the help of the Herblore daily. Yet another amazing thing unlocked through the incredible loot of Croesus. I decided it was time to head back over and finish grinding revenants for that hammer so we can finally be done with it. I was at about 23,900 KC at this point and was really hoping it wasn't going to take too much more. I ended up getting a corrupted Vesta's longsword and another revenant drop enhancer before running into another scouting PK. -er. I quickly got out of there and it was right at the end of my aura anyways, so I decided to call it a day. The next day I was back at it again and got a whole bunch of drops, including a couple nice ones. I got a real Zuriel staff, which could be a very nice upgrade if we end up getting an Ancient Warriors equipment patch. I also got a Willy Hilt, which is lock progress towards the Wilderness Slayer log. Aside from that, it was a bunch of other stuff that doesn't really help us out. I continued to work hard at Revenants and nabbed myself even more loot. Mostly useful things, but I did get a Zuriel's robe top, which could possibly be useful at some point. I also ended up getting yet another pair of brawling gloves, this time the hunter gloves. Then, after countless hours, I actually got a Stadius Warhammer. I grabbed the thing and immediately teleported out of the wilderness to check it out and make sure I wasn't dreaming. The final kill count for Revenants was 28,916. I did technically kill another Revenant while the one that dropped the hammer was still dying, so one less was the actual number for the hammer. This was such an insanely long and brutal grind and I'm just so happy to be done with it. Keep in mind, this was back before they made the Wilderness opt-in PvP, so I was also having to contend with PKers very frequently. At around 450 kills an hour, this took me over 60 hours to get a Stadius Warhammer. Not sure if I was lucky or not here, but I'm just happy to be done. And with that, we've now completed the entire Chaos Elemental log, including the Chaos Elemental pet, and also retrieved ourselves a Stadius Warhammer. We also ended up getting all the way to the Revenant Hellhound pet, which I think is pretty cool. With this grind out of the way, we can finally move on from the wilderness and begin leveling up this account. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and leave the video a like if you liked it. I also stream over on Twitch and would love it if you went and dropped me a follow over there as well. I also have a friends chatting game under my previous account's name, Expired Bree, that a bunch of us hang out in and anyone is welcome to join. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one!